Hello again, I'm Ben Brownlee for Boris Effects, and this is part two of our Mocha Pro and Blackmagic Fusion compositing workflow series. In the first part, we match moved our sky into place, and now it's time to bring our trees back in using keying and Mocha Marsh shapes. I'll show you the fastest way to create the Marsh shapes and how to work with multiple roto splines back in Fusion. So now we have the first part of our sky replacement in place. We have the, the sky moving and tracked in properly. We now want to composite this a little bit better. I'm going to arrange my node layout a little bit more neatly now. I don't need to have the sunset hooked up into Mocha Pro anymore. We are going to be using that same tracking data that we created for the initial track many, many times. So I'm not going to delete this. I'm just going to have this hanging out. And just going to hold down Alt just to bring in a my little dot, get this looking a little bit neater. And if I come back into our dual view mode, we can see I've got almost no detail in the sky in my original shot. Pretty much nothing at all. It's just gray, overcast, horrible. But this should be pretty good for pulling a luma key to try to simply hold in most of these tree details. So let's try doing just that. Shift and space to bring up my tool selection and just type in luma key. I have a few to choose from, but I'll just use the native fusion luma key. Don't want this piped in there. Let's, uh, let's come over, move these over here. And we'll input our clip into the luma key. Let's put that into both viewers one and two, and we'll set viewer one just to have a look at the alpha channel. In the luma key controls, I'm going to just bring in the black values down there just to try and get as a good of a high contrast mask as possible. And that should be something for us to work with. Okay, so let's take the output of our luma key into the effect mask of the tracker. Let's take a little look at that. So now we're starting to hold in the tree a little bit more. There's a few problems in the color here. I'm not, oh, you know, I am a little bit concerned about that, but I'm not hugely worried about that. What I'm more worried about, if we take a look at the alpha channel, is the fact that we can't pull a good key on these buildings or on the boats down here because these are fairly bright. So these are getting taken out by the Kia as well as the sky. So we need to create some holding masks for this. And the easiest way to do that is obviously with Mocha. So let's come back to our Mocha Pro node launch Mocha one more time. And I still have my background track that we created in the last exercise. And there you can see the data moving along near the surface. But let's just turn off the processing cog and the visibility on that and set up our shapes. So I'm going to come to the XSpline tool and I'm going to just come in and make some rough shapes around our background here. I don't need to be too detailed about it. I'll click and hold down Z to zoom out and X to pan around and then finish off my shape with a right click and right click as well on one of the handles to make those nice sharp edges. Let's tweak our points just a little bit. So far, so good. Give this an overlay, Alt or Option 1 to turn on the, the color overlays there. And I will call this one Garbage Mask. Great. Well, I could come in and try to retrack this again, but what's the point? We've already got a good background track. So let's just link our Garbage Mask to the background track that we've already created. Let's scrub that through. That should be pretty good. If we come to the first frame, you see that I didn't quite make the, the shape big enough. That's not a problem. We can either kind of keyframe it into place, or I'm going to use the Uber key to make sure that it's going to be the same shape all the way through. So without keyframing, it's just going to stay that nice same shape there. Excellent. If I wanted to get a little bit more detailed about this, I can add in more shapes for things like the flagpole. So if I come to my rectangle shape, I can go X plus to add this to my garbage mask layer. Just bring this in roughly, right click, 
select all in spline, turn on my transform tool, and I could just hold down control or command just to maneuver that into place. There we go. And I'll do the same thing with my ellipse tool, X plus, and just put that on top. And because I use the plus, they're all going to the same layer, so I don't have to manually link in multiple objects. If I'm happy with that, I'm going to come down and export these shapes. So export data, export shape, and again, it's going to ask me which format I want to use. I'm going to choose Blackmagic Fusion. I'm just going to take out my selected layer, which is my garbage mask, either saving this out as a separate file or just copying this to the clipboard. Now I can save one more time, exit out of Mocha, and come back into Fusion. And I'm going to paste it in again, Control or Command V, or coming up to Edit Paste. There we go. And it's brought in my masks, except it looks like it's only brought in one mask node. But if I click off on this and then move these around, you'll see that we, in fact, have three, one for each of the splines that we created in Mocha. And to get all these working together, I'm just going to connect them top to tail. So we take a look at the garbage mask over there. That's what my garbage mask is doing. All right. So let's pipe my garbage mask layers into the garbage mat input on the Luma key. Right, let's, let's come over here somewhere so we can see this bit better. And piped in, and that holds in those details for me. So we come to a single viewer again. Let's deselect everything, just play that back. We've now imported those shapes from Mocha and are using those in our main composite. Now, if I click on any of these shapes, because these are now fusion shapes, I can use my fusion controls to decide how they mix together and if I want a soft edge or not. Here, it doesn't make any sense to have a soft edge. So I'm going to keep that down to a nice hard edge. And that's how easy it is to use Mocha shapes within fusion. You create your shapes in Mocha, export those shapes out as a fusion comp, paste that into Fusion, and if you have multiple shapes, you just connect those all together and use them in your main comp. In the next section, we're going to be seeing how we can recycle that data one more time to do parameter tracking on effects. So join me there when we're using Mocha Pro for parameter tracking with modifiers. My name is Ben Brownlee for Boris Effects, and I will see you again soon. Head on over to the training section of borisfx.com and you'll find Mocha Essentials, which is a free training series to get you started on all the ins and outs of Mocha Pro. If you'd like to see more training for Mocha Pro and Fusion, then please let us know in the comments below. If you've got any suggestions for the type of project you'd like to see, then tell me down there as well. For a free trial of Mocha Pro and all of the Boris Effects lineup, head on over to borisfx.com.